How's it going, everybody? Um, I apologize for being a, a little uh, screwed up. I had a late night last night, but um, uh, so who am I? I'm uh, Ill Will. Um, I'm X Ill X on Twitter, GitHub, and Pornhub. Got a couple sites out there, um, and uh, um, the, all this started from uh, from a site called TrackSomebody.com, which I used to run. I ended up uh, killing the domain last year. Um, but uh, so this is a project that spawned from that website. Um, so as most of you know that you're here, uh, what OSINT is, um, which is basically collecting all the information from uh, different sites, public sites, uh, without a paid API. Um, part of the reason why I did this project because uh, uh, a lot of the a lot of the other programs like this, uh, you had to pay money for to, to get the API to get the information. Um, so I tried to do it uh, a little bit cheap for uh, people that don't want to pay. Um. <laughs> so, uh, scraping sites is kind of like a gray area. Uh, a few courts ruled that uh, that it's not uh, illegal to scrape sites, um, but there is uh, the people that you scrape from could try to mess with you a little bit. But as far as I know, this is legal. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, so um, tools commonly used would be uh, one, Maltigo. Um, they have the paid version, they have the community version on Kali, um, which isn't as great. Um, you can make a lot, a lot of transforms uh, for them, and uh, it's a really good tool if you want to pay for it. Um, another one, Recon NG, um, kind of a similar uh, path that I'm using for, for this, but uh, a lot of their stuff uh, requires also APIs uh, to get information from, some free, some paid. Um, And then just the the internet, uh, Googling stuff, Google dorking, um, Bing, a um, bunch of different sites like that. Uh, why is scraping better than APIs? First, it's cheap, as I said. Um, you know, you don't have to pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee for uh, X amount of, of, of times that you can scrape from their site. Um, there's no limitations. Again, you don't have that, uh, that top level where you have, say, 10,000 uh, search queries, and if you burn through them, uh, in the course of a month or, or a year, um, you don't have to keep on upgrading. Um, and then it's like most of it's getting the results that we want. So if we have a, a site that doesn't have uh, um, an API to it, we could basically scrape the page, pull all the information off of it, and, uh, and just display it as we need. Now, as I said before, uh, I used to run tracksomebody.com. It was just basically a, uh, a site that had um, JavaScript. You would basically uh, um, choose any of the top level um, uh, URLs, and, and basically you would uh, just type in whatever query that you had, a phone number, email, uh, screen name, uh, real name, and address. Um, so I let it expire because I didn't think I was actually going to make something out of it, um, but here I am. Um, right now, it, in its present form, if you still want to uh, check out the web version, uh, it's at this URL. Um, you can do basically most of the stuff that you can do in uh, in Skip Tracer. Uh, you can do right from the web. So if you're um, you know just on your phone or something like that, uh, you can just go there. Um, it has pretty much everything that that, that you can do. Uh, plus license plate lookup. Um, the license plate itself um, it does it doesn't give you any, any information on the person. It just gives you the VIN number, the make model, and all that. Um, but basically, you just go there, you press any of the buttons up top, put in your query, and it just pops open a bunch of tabs. It doesn't work well on Chrome, because um, they block block it because of spyware and all that stuff that, that messes with it. Uh, Internet Explorer, of course, lets everything happen. <laughs> so um, I started off this project. Uh, I was working on something. I came across Beautiful Soup, uh, which is a Python library uh, that allows you to uh, get the needle in the haystack pretty much. You say, I want this, this, and this from this page, and I want to I want to export it to whatever I want to use it for. Um, so I, I had it for another project, and then I was like, okay, well, why don't I try to do the, the track somebody the same way? Um, now the code. <laughs> Uh, if anybody ever asks you to upgrade to Python 3, just punch them in the dick. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I, I, tried, I tried making this like the PEP8 uh, and, and all that stuff compatible. It just turned it into a hot mess. Uh, so I'm still working on it. Um, right now in its current form on GitHub, uh, it's kind of messed up. 
So I got to kind of work on that today to, to, to release it out. So, um, so basically, uh, yeah, if anybody tells you that uh, machine learning or AI is, it's just if statements. Um, you know, it's not anything special or magical that, uh, that lets you know, uh, you know, I could do this, but um, so what it is in its form is just basically scraping. Uh, you, you're gonna uh, create a connection to the website. Uh, once you get that connection, you get the source of the page, and then it's just gonna, par uh, beautiful soup's just gonna parse the results out for you. You're just gonna say, okay, I want something in between these HTML tags uh, and something between these, and it uh, just spits it out all for you. So, um, Skip Tracer is uh, the, 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 pro the project that came out of all this. Um, uh, basically, uh, I'm gonna go over the couple um, items that it, uh, that it goes over. So um, right now, um, it's kind of like a framework. I started this originally with like a, just a single single Python script. Now I have an actual uh, framework where uh, um, you just basically uh, put in the search query. Uh, the first one would be the phone uh, one where you um, just put in the phone number and it, it, uh, it kicks back every, everything that it finds on these pages. Uh, so far I got five plugins from five different sites, uh, one being Who Called, 401 Info, True People Search. Um, there used to be good sites like uh, OpenCNAM um, that went to API, like they used to use that, scrape that with no issues. Um, they started to go into a paid stuff and most of their stuff was current um, and some of these sites are not exactly up to date but for the most part it's pretty current. Um, there is some discrepancies, like say like they just got a phone number like a month ago. It's not gonna show up in this stuff uh, just because uh, they haven't got access to that database yet. Um, uh, so most of these sites here, uh, when you go to the site, uh, it's one of those things where they scam you into paying like $1.99 or $2.99 and then they just keep on billing you if you forget that you uh, have to cancel it. Um, so what it does is uh, it basically goes to the page, um, it'll scrape out anything uh, about that person or about that query and, uh, and just display it for you. Uh, right now it, uh, it outputs in JSON file, um, so you can actually import that to whatever database or anything that you need to do. Um, email recon is basically all those same background check sites. Um, it also has a module uh, for LinkedIn. Um, if you uh, the module for LinkedIn actually requires you to have um, a valid um, uh, user account. Don't use your personal user account because uh, anybody that pings that, they're gonna get a notification saying so and so looked at your profile. Um, so we sign up for like a burner account for that. Um, the MySpace one, of course, people still have MySpace out there from their old emails. Might be good for recon where, you know, it was back in the day, nobody really cared about putting uh, up their information and not scared like Facebook. Um, Pack emails, that went down recently uh, uh, for GDPR, uh, basically all the Privacy Act stuff. Uh, so that, that got removed from, um, from the modules uh, recently, but basically they, they changed it over first uh, to, to take down their API, and then they changed it to, if you were looking up to see if it was your um, email that was hacked, it will send you an, e uh, an email saying, somebody's querying you for this, is this you? If so, click this link to, to, uh, to check it out. Um, so the fallback to that, the Have I Been Pwned, works really well. Uh, Troy did a good job of uh, compiling most of this stuff. Uh, it's really good if, uh, I mean, for the most part, you, if you search hard enough, you can find the dumps that th this stuff is in. So if, if it's something where you're doing a pen test and you're trying to get some more information um, from a target, uh, maybe a password reuse might get you in. Um, the who is mine is basically, uh, it just looks for anybody that registered a domain with that email. Uh, sometimes good because a lot of people forget to do privacy on theirs. Uh, they'll have their home information, their home phone number um, attached to it. So it's, it's really good uh, if, if the person's not uh, paying attention. Username Recon, uh, there's two sites that basically go through um, all the social media sites, Facebook, Foursquare, MySpace, all that. Um, so the uh, the Noam plugin only gives you uh, where it came from, so it just says, okay, they have a Facebook account, but it doesn't tell you where it is. A lot of times it's, a, you know, facebook.com forward slash their username anyhow. Um, Namecheck does a little bit better where they actually spit back um, the URLs where you can go and test and try to see if that actual account uh, is valid. Um, it's not always 100%. Um, sometimes there's uh, just killed accounts that it, it may give you a false uh, 
uh, a false answer saying that this account exists here, but it really doesn't. And uh, then we got the first uh, first name and, and last name recon. Um, basically, it goes through a couple of the sites that the phone number one goes through. Uh, a lot of that information is tied um, uh, to the person. Um, and these sites, uh, the ones that charge like a dollar ninety nine, stuff like that, advanced background checks, uh, they give you small tidbits of information uh, that you can hook together. Uh, in the course of of creating this, I found that after I wrote all the beautiful soup to pull that information. If I scrolled all the way down to the bottom of advanced background checks and just uh, or in the source code of uh, advanced background checks, I actually have a JSON file that gives you all the information. So all I had to do was just basically parse that information. Um, the, the regular HTML would give you just the age. Uh, the JSON file will actually give you the date of birth um, or something that's linked to it. Um, so, uh, so you know, you can use that in the course of you know trying to find out where somebody is. Uh, it goes through a couple steps. It, it basically will ask you uh, what state zip code or city they're from. Uh, are they male, female? Uh, are they older than thirty? And then uh, one of the other sites is just basically uh, it asks you for an age range. So if you kind of know, or the uh, or the first one spit back a, an age, you could say you know roughly between uh, as the example shows any anywhere from like fifty to sixty. The state that they're in, and uh, it'll basically spit back any information. Um, and also, it's also good for uh, relatives. So if you're trying to find somebody on social media, they don't have an account. A lot of times, you can go to their family members page, and you can uh, you can basically find them, you know, at at, at family functions, um, stuff like that. And you can kind of like dig in a, a little a little bit easier finding out their location and their relatives. So uh, as I was saying before, uh, the plate lookup, um, it doesn't give you the exact information. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to ping into uh, DMV to try to pull that stuff out. Uh, it does, uh, I did find a site that actually um, gives you the information. When you plug in um, the plate number in the state, uh, it'll kick back and tell you what the VIN number and all that stuff is. Uh, what I was doing before is uh, there's a couple sites where if you plugged in a, um, if you plugged in a plate, and you got back the VIN number, you can actually uh, pull that from uh, dot.gov and uh, that'll pull the same information that kind of like fax VIN and stuff do. Um, so I'm gonna try to do a demo. Um, I don't know how well my, uh, I'm gonna try to do it from my phone because the, uh, the Wi-Fi here is a little bit wonky. Um, So right now I'm, I'm kicking back to the uh, the older code. Uh, the stuff that's on GitHub right now is kind of a little bit janky. It's not working right, um, but it's basically pretty simple. Um, to get the uh, the program started, um, there's some require there's a requirement dot text um, that you would basically just import, and it will download all the different libraries that it uses. Um, uh, the the next version you're just going to call it with Python three and uh, this one right now, it's just uh, it, it's in a it's in a kind of a weird state, a wonky state. Um, so, oh. why is this thing not going on? Did it go up? No. Yeah, I hate Microsoft shit. <laughs> All right, let me, let me just kill this. Let's see what pops up. So basically, uh, the way the way it is now, before it was just uh, command line driven, where you can actually put the parameters into the command line. 
Uh, some people were having problems with it because they didn't know what to type or anything on there. So we tried to start making a, uh, a menu-driven system um, that people are a little more familiar with um, from different things. Um, was that? <sighs> Kill me. Oh, it's control plus and minus. Here we go. Is that good enough or one more? Okay, so uh, so basically when you uh, when you call uh, the script itself. Uh, it's going to start with a, a menu. It's going to give you all the choices. You're going to get um, email, name, phone number, screen name, plate, um, and an interactive profile. What that, the profiler does is say, like you you, you know some of the information uh, on the person. Uh, you can you can set it up to say their age, uh, their their uh, gender, um, and uh, any information of where they live. And that'll when you when you're going into the other uh, items, you don't have to type it in. It'll basically save all that stuff for you. Um, so the demo, we're, what we're going to do is uh, we'll just do like an email. Um, as you've seen in some of the slides, um, basically uh, I use uh, Kevin Mitnick stuff um, because uh, he's easy to find. So let's see if this actually works. So uh, what the first one does is uh, um, actually scroll back up. Uh, what the first one does is, is it goes to LinkedIn has a, uh, I think it's a sales feature that they have for uh, for people to spam the hell out of you on there. Um, but basically the uh, the link that it goes to, I found it on IntelTechniques.com. Uh, they had uh, somebody had posted something about uh, that you can pull this information if you had a valid account and you can log into LinkedIn, um, you can pull that information. So you'll get stuff uh, like their uh, their name, where they work, stuff like that. Um, You'll get sometimes their image. A lot of times, if you go from Google, um, they won't show their actual uh, um, profile image. Um, but it, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually going to compile that stuff. Uh, eventually, get it into stuff like uh, TinEye and uh, Google Image uh, Reverse Image Search. Um, so that way, you can see uh, if that that profile image is used somewhere else. Uh, it's in the works. It's not in there yet. Um, the second thing, uh, I guess Kevin doesn't have MySpace anymore. Um, and then it goes to have I been pwned. So basically, it goes through um, the data on there, and it uh, it basically pulls all the information that uh, or all the all the different breaches that someone's been in. So like I said, if you can if you can search hard enough, you can get the database. A lot of these are cracked um, already, so you don't have to go through the process of cracking the stuff. You just get the hash, compare it to uh, some of the word lists that are out there, and uh, um, I think uh, hashes.org has a lot of stuff uh, where you can actually compare that stuff and. Don't even have to crack it. Just you use that as your dictionary. Pull that stuff up. Um, so as you see, uh, like I was saying before, the JSON file um, it will pull up their their name, uh, uh, middle name, date of birth, uh, depending on what's out there. It's going to show all their old phone numbers that they may or may not have uh, over the courses of the years. Um, you'll see stuff like their uh, their old emails. Um, I think uh, it goes back, probably spans back like 15 years. A lot of these old databases. Uh, uh, there, there's like a big six company, uh, six companies that that uh, have all this data where they aggregate it and sell it and kind of trickle down the line. Um, so it basically, uh, uh, those sites that are dollar ninety nine, they're probably uh, uh, most of the same parent company or parent company where it comes from. Um, but it, they they just try to sucker you into into doing all that stuff. Um, so uh, you can. What I did now was just a, an all. It basically runs through all the modules for for uh, for email. So we'll go through all those, or you can singly do them just to check if somebody has a LinkedIn. Um, oops. Since the, the name is already cached, when you enter it the first time, the name is already cached, so you don't, it doesn't ask you again uh, unless you exit back to the main menu. Um, then you can retype it in. Um, but basically, yeah, it just pulls it off singularly or uh, doing all. A lot of people like to do all because uh, uh, you know you just let it run, aggregate the data, uh, and dump it off for later. Um, if you hit back to the, the main menu, um, you can do other stuff like uh, look up a license plate. Um, 
a lot of times Faxfin, uh, for some reason, the, the site itself is pretty slow uh, pulling up information. So if I want to do like somebody with the license plate hacker that lived in Connecticut, um, sometimes it will hit, sometimes it won't. So it will say no results found. Um, but if I hit it again, um, okay, no results found. Uh, let's try a different... Um, I'll try a Las Vegas one. So plate. Oops. Yeah, it's just I mean it, you'll pull up uh, any information that that may be related to it. A lot of times, like uh, uh, advanced background checks, if you pull up an email. It'll pull their whole profile, and they'll have the additional emails at the bottom, um, which you can then use to to do a query for. Maybe it's something that's uh, not out there. It's a, something that's an old email that they don't use anymore, but it's still linked back to other social media. Yeah. Uh, Up, but yeah, I mean the Faxman one's a little bit wonky. Uh, I don't know if there's something that's a, a buffer on there. I gotta I gotta work on that a little. But a lot of times, if you if you try to run it again, um, it'll uh, it'll pull it up uh, even though it says no results found. I'm not too sure why, but um, maybe they don't, just don't have it. Yeah, nothing. All right. Um, So, uh, so what we're doing is we're basically uh, we're, we're building out a framework uh, where people can uh, submit modules to the GitHub, uh, which basically pulls any information. So if you know of a good site that, uh, that you can get X amount of information uh, without any issues, um, you know, feel free to, to submit it uh, to GitHub. Um, let me just pop this back up. So the demo was semi good. Uh, <laughs> um, so to, the things on the list to do uh, again, like I said, we're, we're trying to move to Python three. It's just a pain in the ass. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully soon we'll get to that point where uh, it's 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 more uh, Pepe compliant and all that stuff. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, they'll kill off Python two point seven, even though it's easy as hell to use and and easier to understand. Eventually, they're going to move away from that. So. Um, like I said, looking for more plugins. Uh, I'm going to be doing API support for uh, some of the some of the sites, uh, even though some of them are, are paid or or, or free. Um, it, it's always good where you're going to get that information that's not normally on these free sites. Um, right now, the the output uh, is just a JSON file. Uh, we're going to get it to CSV and H, uh, an HTML like pretty page, um, etc. Um, and again, the uh, the GDPR is also a problem, um, so eventually the uh, um, you know eventually you know hopefully that shit dies down uh, and, and and these sites go back to resuming business as normal. Um, but I want to give a couple of special thanks to some people that help uh, work on the project. Um, it's basically uh, you know I'm not a Python programmer. I just did it for shits and giggles just to see if I can do it. Um, a lot of these guys listed. Uh, do Python day to day. They know a hell of a lot more than me. Um, so I just want to thank them. Um, I think we're uh, to the almost in point. Okay. Um, so basically, yeah, uh, it's going to be up on GitHub. Um, the uh, hopefully it'll be updated today. Uh, if I don't crash out and die, I've just been up for uh, like 24 hours. Um, but the uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to work through uh, some of the pro uh, the problems that we have with the with the Python three is it's it's just not pulling the information and parsing it correctly. Um, so hopefully today I'll get that updated. Uh, um, right now, if you go to uh, GitLab with the same URL, um, you can you can pull down a, a working version uh, that's that was uh, the old 2.7 3.0 hybrid um, that we had an update. 
Um, we're basically working off GitLab and then pushing it over to GitHub. Um, so uh, again, feel free if you have any information of some cool site or, or, uh, or anywhere where you can, you can pull the information from that's not a paid API that you can just pull the information, um, you know, feel free to submit it. Um, if you see that my code is shitty, feel free to, to shit on it in the comments. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to build this out to be like a framework so people can just add and submit stuff as, uh, as it goes. Uh, problem with all these sites, they go up and down all the time. They go, sometimes it's a free site for a while, then it'll go to a paid API because they, like, they suckered all those people into, into using the service and they figure there's nothing better. Um, so again, if you, if you have anything on there, um, uh, you know, just go to the URL, hit submit, uh, let me know. Um, you know, any, any other issues, but, uh, I guess I got a couple minutes for, uh, for questions if anybody has any. Not yet. It's where, uh, I, uh, I, I, I have one that's, that's working. I just haven't put it into the repo yet. Um, so it, it does, uh, it does actually pull the, uh, the information from there. Uh, it pulls, uh, it, sometimes it's their age. Sometimes it's where they work. Um, but it tries to aggregate that stuff. I just haven't released it yet, um, just because it's a little bit wonky on the way that they have it, but um, it will be released probably in the next like uh, couple weeks. You got a question or? Okay. Yep. Well, the, uh, so the, the LinkedIn one uh, where I'm pulling from that page actually just pings that person directly. It, it's not actually a search query on, on LinkedIn itself. So when you hit it, it's just a direct hit as, a, as that user. And it, and it just picks it up to say, um, you know, this person viewed your profile within the last day or something like that, depending on how uh, security is set up and all that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's not the, the, the normal like searching through there. Um, it's just basically getting that, that information and just displaying it on the page. Um, anybody else have any questions? All right, I think good. Thank you.